Hello friends, today in the series of immunology lectures, let us uh, proceed with the fourth lecture of this series and it will going to deal with antigens. The first stage of removing an invading organism is to recognize it as being foreign, that is not self. The immune system distinguishes between self and non-self through an elaborated recognition process. Prior to birth, the body inventories uh, the proteins and various other large molecules present that is self and removes most T cells specific for self determinants. Subsequently, self substances can be distinguished from non cell substances and lymphocytes can produce specific immunological reactions against the later, leading to their removal. The immune system sees the invader as having a number of antigens. A substance that can produce a specific immune response when it is introduced into the tissue of an animal that can react specifically with antibodies or sensitized cells is known as an antigen. Antigens are defined as substances which induces an immune response. They include protein, carbohydrate, lipid and nucleic acid. Now let's talk about haptons. Hapton is low molecular weight molecule that is recognized by preformed antibody but is not itself immunogenic unless conjugated to a carrier molecule which provides epitope recognized by the helper T cell. These haptons as they are called they can be attached to the larger molecule and in the physical form can with the help of T cell induce the formation of antibodies. Here one can distinguish between molecules which can stimulate an immune response that is immunogen and those which can react with the antibodies but cannot initiate an immune response that is hapton or individual antigenic determinants. It is logical to refer a hapton as an antigen and hapton protein complex as the immunogen. Although strictly the word antigen is derived from antibody generating substances. When we talk about the epitope, the part of an antigen with which the antibody react is known as the epitope or antigenic determinant. Antigenic determinant or epitope are the smallest unit of an antigen to which antibody or cell can bind. These antigen determinants are usually expressed in multiple copies on the foreign material example proteins or carbohydrates on the bacterial cell surface of a virus. For a protein an antibody binds to a unit which is about 3 to 6 amino acids while for a carbohydrate it is about 5 to 6 sugar residues. Therefore most large uh, uh, molecules possesses many antigenic determinants per molecule that is they are multi determinant. However, these determinants may be identical or different from each other on the same molecule. For example, a carbohydrate with repeating sugar units will have repeating 3 to 5 amino acid sequences and will have many different antigenic determinants. Valency uh, plays a very important role in antigenic property. The number of epitopes per molecule of an antigen is referred to as its valency. The functional valency of an antigen is different from the total valency of an antigen. The functional valency sites are all, the, are all on the outer surface of the antigenic molecules and can be measured by determining the number of antibody molecules that attach to the antigen. The valency determines the number of antibody molecules that can combine with an antigen at one time. If one determinant site is present, the, antigenic, the antigen is known as monovalent. Most antigen, however, have more number, more than one determinant site or more than one copy of the same epitope and are termed multivalent. Multivalent antigens generally elicit a stronger immune response than do the monovalent antigens. Antigens can be separated on the basis of molecular mass upon electrophoresis through polyacrylamide gels. Antigens separated in this way can be blotted onto nitrocellulose membrane and their presence can be detected by probing with suitable antibodies. Higher concentration of antigens are frequently estimated by nephalometry. Protein microarray containing thousands of proteins immobilized on solid support can be probed with antibody for simultaneous screening of many antigens. Similarly, antibody microarray can be used to screen for the presence of multiple antigens in a single sample. Now there are many uh, essential factors uh, that are determining the antigenicity of any molecule. Let's discuss some of the very essential factors for antigenicity. Size is one of the very important factor. 
the molecular size of an antigen has a direct relation to antigenicity. The most active immunogen tends to have molecular mass of 1 lakh Dalton. Generally, substances with a molecular mass less than 5000 to 10,000 Daltons are poor immunogens. Although a few substances with a molecular mass less than 1000 Daltons have proven to be immunogenic. Very large molecules such as hemocyanin, thyroglobulin and tetanus, and tetanus toxin are excellent antigens. Whereas, molecules of low molecular size are poor antigens. For example, protein like insulin and histones are poor antigens. Another essential factor is solubility of an antigen. The non-antigenicity of synthetic polymer is attributed to their insolubility in body fluids and any substance which is not converted to soluble form by tissue enzymes are also non-antigenic. Chemical nature also plays an important role in antigenicity. Most of the naturally occurring antigens are protein and polysaccharides and these antigens are found, in, are found to be comparatively more antigenic than lipids and nucleic acid. Proteins are better antigenic when compared to polysaccharides of the same size. Synthetic homopolymers, that is a polymer composed of single amino acids or sugars, tends to lack, tends to lack immunogenicity regardless of their size. Studies have shown that the copolymer composed of different amino acids or sugars are usually more immunogenic than homopolymers of their constituents. These studies show that the chemical complexity contributes to immunogenicity. In this regard, it is notable that all the four levels of protein organization that is primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary contributes to the structural complexity of a protein and hence affects the immunogenicity. Synthetic polymers are micromolecules in size but not endogenic as they, as they lack higher internal molecular complexity that is usually possessed by the polypeptide. Presence of aromatic amino acids in a polypeptide contributes to enhancement of its antigenicity. Foreignness also plays a very important property uh, governing the antigenicity of any molecule. This property allows the macromolecule to be antigenic. To be antigenic, the macromolecule must come from a foreign source. Antigens from related species are less antigenic than that of the unrelated species and antigens from the members of the same species are less antigenic than that of the other species. The more distant or foreign the antigen source, the better is the antigenicity. In order to elicit the immune response, a molecule must be recognized as non-self by the biological system. The capacity to recognize non-self is accompanied by tolerance of self, a specific unresponsiveness to self-antigen. Susceptibility to antigen processing and presentation also, also plays a very important role. The development of both humoral and cell-mediated immune response requires the interaction of T-cells and antigen that has been, uh, that has been processed and presented to, uh, together with the MHC molecules. Large insoluble macromolecules generally are more immunogenic than small soluble ones because the larger molecules are more readily phagocytosed and processed. Macromolecules that cannot be degraded and presented with MHC molecules are poor immunogens. This can be illustrated with the polymers of D amino acids which are stereoisomers of naturally occurring L amino acids. Because the degradative enzymes with the, antigen, uh, with the antigen presenting cells can degrade only protein containing L amino acids, polymers of D amino acids cannot be processed and thus are poor immunogens. You are going to find in the coming slides that there are many types of antigens. Cross reactive antigen is one of them. Now, antigen antibody reaction is specific and the specificity is determined by the spatial configuration of the antigenic determinant groups. But the antigen specificity is not absolute. Cross reaction can occur between the antigens which bear stereochemical similarities. Cross reacting antigen is one which is capable of binding, of, uh, binding to antibody produced in response to the different antigens. This is due to the sharing of the determinants by the two antigens or because the antigenic determinants of the two, although non-identical, are closely enough related stereochemically to combine with antigens against any one of them. Heterophile antigen is one such cross-reactive antigen. These are antigens which exist on the surface of tissue cells of unrelated plants, animals and bacteria, but are identical so that the antibodies to one will cross-react with the other. Very often, these uh, heterophile antigens are polysaccharides and these polysaccharides are structurally similar 
because of their limited chemical complexity even though they are derived from members of the widely separated taxonomic groups. Phosmin antigen is one of the heterophile antigen. These are glycolipids antigens originally described to be present in the most tissues of guinea pigs and RBCs of many species such as horse, sheep, dog, cat, chicken and many other organisms. In human, phosmin antigen is found on the gastrointestinal mucosa of some people. Antigens can be either thymus dependent or thymus independent. Thymus dependent antigens is one, of, is one that does not induces an immune response in an animal which lacks a thymus. Helper T cell uh, cooperation is needed uh, in order B lymphocyte to respond to such antigen in producing antibody forming cells. T cell epitopes are generated by antigen processing which fragments protein into the small peptides that, con that combine with class 1 or class 2 MSC molecule to form peptide MSC complexes that are displayed on the surface of the cell. T cell activation requires the formation of a tenere complex between uh, a T cell TCR and peptide MSC on antigen presenting or altered self cells. Coming on to the thymus independent antigens, these are the one which is capable, uh, which are capable to stimulate B lymphocytes to produce antibody without the cooperation of the T lymphocytes. This includes polysaccharides with re repeating antigenic determinants and the lipopolysaccharides from gram negative bacteria. The sizes of the B cell epitopes range widely. Some are quite small, examples small peptides or small organic molecules and are often bound in narrow grooves or deep pockets of the antibody. Protein B cell epitopes are much larger and interact with a larger flatter complementary surface on the antibody molecule. These are the references that you can go for the further studies of uh, immunogen uh, and the related uh, topics. Thank you so much. Thank you.